Getting lost in your family tree is very easy to do, but with color coding, you can figure out your way around your family tree with ease. Today, let's talk about color coding your family tree in Roots Magic 9 and how it just got easier. If you're unfamiliar with Roots Magic, it's a powerful genealogy software that can help you organize and keep track of your family history. And now with the latest update, color coding your family tree has become more powerful. Similar to Roots Magic 8, which I talked about in this video, to color code a person or multiple persons, you have to right click in the pedigree view, the family tree view, the descendants view, the people list view, and you notice the word color coding. Click on color coding and then you'll see this pop-up window. You then can choose from 28 colors and various parameters to color individuals or groups in your tree. If you color coded your tree in Roots Magic 8, don't worry, it does import into Roots Magic 9, but there will be a little bit of a change, so stick around for that. For now, I need to clear all the colors that I currently have to show you how this feature works. When you want to add color to one person or a group of people, right click on their profile and click color coding. Now, I want to highlight this brown for my ancestor slide. And I want to do the ancestors of the current person. So I have brown selected ancestors of current person. Click apply highlight color to people selected above. And now everyone is brown because they're all the direct ancestors. If I want to open this profile again, unlike in Roots Magic 8, in Roots Magic 9, all you have to do is double click on that. In Roots Magic 8, you still had to right click and then open the color coding window. Anywhere you see colors in the family tree, if you double click on that color, it will, will open this right back up. Now, a new feature in Roots Magic is that you can actually label the colors. Sometimes you forget why you assigned a color to a line. In this case, I'm going to type in brown because anybody with the surname brown will have the color brown. Go ahead and hit close and go back to the family tree and we have everybody brown and that's not exactly what I want. So the next thing I can do is I can say, all right, anybody that is a Townsend, I want them to be another color. Well, maybe they'll do a little khaki. So they're related to the browns, but they're not going to be the brown line. So this is going to be the Townsend line. And I'm going to click on ancestors of current person, apply highlighted to everyone. And now it is a light tan. And maybe that is too hard for you to see. So we're gonna double click. And then this time we're going to take out the word Townsend and maybe let's apply it to a green and type Townsend here, apply to current ancestors, apply color, and now we have brown and green. So now I want to have four colors to the family tree. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is double click on this family and I'm gonna use a pink. This is the long line. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose ancestors of a current person, apply, repeat the process, and then I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna choose a purple and make this the Smiths. Repeat all those steps again. And now zooming out, you can see the four generations of colors that I have, browns, a green, a pink, and a purple. We'll talk more about applying colors for multiple options in a moment, but first we must address an issue mentioned in my previous video. Can you add multiple colors to one person? In Roots Magic, the answer isn't straightforward. On one hand, you can't have one person have multiple colors assigned to them simultaneously. That is available in Family Tree Maker, and I will talk about color coding in Family Tree Maker in a future video. On the other hand, you can assign multiple colors to a person, but you have to switch between color sets. Confused? Let me explain. In this color code set, I have colored ancestral lines. If I double click on the colors to open up that color coding window, notice up here we have current color code set, 
color code set one. And then we have this option for a set name. If you've imported your color system from Roots Magic 8 to Roots Magic 9, your colors will be in here without the colors labeled as to what they are and without the set having a name. So we're all now on the same page depending on if we have some colors applied to the left column or not. Now the first thing we want to do is give this set a name. So in this case, I'm going to say an ancestral line. Once we clicked out of that, close out of that, come right back in and notice it's renamed ancestral line. And Roots Magic actually gives you up to 10 color coded sets. Now if you happen to share your family tree, with a spouse or other family members and you have different lines within the same tree, this can become very handy. You don't have to fight over who gets what colors. Instead, choose the next available color code set. But first, let's rename this real quickly. Let's say this was my tree with my husband. I have the brown and the Geisler line. So I can go ahead and call this set name the Brown and the Geislers, even though I haven't color coded the Geislers side just yet. And now when I close that out and come right back in, notice my set, set is the Brown Geisler set. So now if I wanna do anti side, I can click on color code set two, give it a new name, which would be Lee Kevern, and notice all of the colors are blank. That's because this would be Andy's color coding. However, don't panic. You might think, wait, 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 my colors are gone. Well, if I go back and apply my color coding set, they come back as if nothing happens. But let's come back to the problem of not being able to apply more than one color to a person at a time. On my Canadian side of my family tree, I have the Zemsteins. So I can come in and choose a new color and in this case, we're going to choose maroon. These will be the Zemsteins. And this time I'm going to apply it to the descendants of the current person, including spouses, apply the color, and notice all of those folks are maroon. It's a harder color to see, so maybe I'll go and switch it to a bright red. So now they're red. Now, if I come to the Snyders, I'm going to give them a new color. And notice something that just happened. I color coded the Snyders blue, which should have possibly stopped at Adeline, who married a Zemstein, and then had these two descendants who should be red and blue. But unfortunately, we only have one color that can be applied to a person at a time. In short, the new ancestor color code will overwrite the previous color coding. So if you have tree collapse, you won't be able to color code your tree in that way. However, with a bit of creativity, you could leverage the new color set feature and then maybe just highlight all the Zemstein descendants in this view, and then the Snyders in a different set are the Snyders. If you have other ideas, let me know what you think would solve this problem in the comments below. However, let's go ahead and talk about creating those multiple color sets one more time. I am actually gonna go do a search of people in the tree based on specific facts. So you can do this for birth locations, marriage locations. Maybe you've added facts to your family tree for religion and you want to color code the various religions. Let me show you how this would work. So in this case, I'm going to make it a birth location set. Birth location. So for the color red, we are going to click on people selected from a list and apply highlighted color to people selected. Well, we haven't selected anybody just yet. So we click on mark after that pop-up screen comes up and we're going to click by data fields. In this view, I'm going to choose birth. And then I will switch this to place 
And instead of equals, I want it to contain Ohio. So then I'm going to type Ohio. So anyone with the birthplace of Ohio, after I click OK, notice that Roots Magic tells me there's about 658 people that this would apply to. Click OK. You haven't changed a tree just yet. But notice there are checks on the side for the individuals that were found with the birthplace of Ohio. I can take somebody off. I can add somebody that was overlooked. And then I can click select. And now everybody that's in my family tree that has a red had to have been born in Ohio. Now, what about Eveline? Where would she have been located when she was born? Well, she was born in Kentucky. So now I can choose a different color. So double click. And now let's choose a blue. And we're going to call this Kentucky. The red was labeled Ohio. The blue is Kentucky. I'm back into this. Selected color. People selected. Apply. And in this time, I'm going to change it to if the birthplace contains Kentucky. There's about 16 people. Click OK. Scroll through. And this was a peak. So I'm going to need to look for peas. And there are a few right there. Click select. And now the color code will appear here. It will appear in this people list, in the descendants list, in the family tree, and then in the descendants view as well. Now I know these individuals were born in Canada. So I can go ahead and do that double click again. And now we have a purple. Now, when you hover over the color, what's going to happen is that Roots Magic will have a little pop up on the screen. And because my arrow is so large, you can't really see that it's telling me the birth location is purple. Now, if I switch the color coding style, go back to the brown cavern, and I hover over it. You will see just barely that it says it is that brown Geisler tree and it tells me that it is the Zumsteins or the Snyders actually. So up here, it's the Zumsteins, but unfortunately my mouse hovers over it. And so you can see it really clear. So I do apologize for that. There are a few reasons why you may want to color code your family tree. First, Color coding can help you visually distinguish between branches of your family. You can assign a color to each line, making it easier to see which family members belong to that part of your tree. Secondly, color coding may help you track the progress of your research. For example, if you utilize a verified, unconfirmed, or in-progress system, you can quickly see which ancestors need your attention, which will help you stay focused on your research. Third. If you want to highlight common traits that your ancestors share, you can also color code that in your tree. Now, I want to make sure I make this clear. Roots Magic does not automatically color code your family tree after you set up the initial color set. There was a way to rapidly color a few people, such as all the ancestors, all of the descendants, or after you did a search. But after you set that all up, Anytime you add somebody new to your tree, you have to apply the colors and you have to apply each color from each active color set. So keep that in mind. When you select a color set, you can do something cool with it. Click on publish and then you can click on the family group sheet or the pedigree chart. Let me choose the pedigree chart right now. Now, don't change any of the parameters just yet. Go ahead and click Generate Report. And when we zoom in, the person I selected, you're going to see it's Zemsteins, and they're all red. Well, that wasn't very exciting. So let me select someone different. Let me select, got to do surname first, and then first name. And I'm going to choose Robert Victor. Select him, click Generate, and notice now 
that I have the red for the Zemstein and the blue for the Snyder. Let's try one more view. So now I'm going to try someone that I know has multiple colors in their pedigree chart. So I have chosen Penny Brown. I'm gonna click Generate. And when it's all done, we can zoom in and we can see the colors we had applied. We've got the blue, the green, the brown, the pink, and the purple. So this is actually kind of nice, I like it. If we go through the rest of the report, you're gonna see the sources that were for the tree. You won't see color coding for anything else, but that is really nice to have that color-coded family tree. One thing to keep in mind is if the published pedigree chart doesn't look like you wanted it to do, you need to make sure that you're in the right color set. Do you remember which one this is? This is the birth location one. When I zoom in, remember the Ohioans, the people born in Ohio are going to be red, the blue will be Kentucky, and then the Canadians are going to be that purple color. Roots Magic's approach to color coding allows us to search people in the database based on color coding. Now, Bruce Budge B, the programmer for Roots Magic, does a great job explaining the power of the search with color code in the video that you see on the screen. I'll leave a link in the description to take you straight to that video segment that discusses the search with the, the color code feature. Color coding your family tree can be a helpful tool for genealogists, and with Roots Magic 9, it's easier than ever. By assigning different colors to different branches of your tree, you can quickly see which family members belong to which part of your tree, track the progress of your research, and view common traits shared about multiple ancestors. If you found this tutorial to be helpful, click the like button and leave questions or comments in the comments section below. Until next time, why don't you check out these videos, on Roots Magic 8, but I bet you can make them work for Roots Magic 9 until I get more Roots Magic 9 videos done.